Today, I'd like to share God's plan with you. All right? <laughs> Are you ready for God's plan? Yes. All right. So, in Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a great plan? Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is God's plan. So uh, it, it was never uh, intended by God uh, for us to, to, you know, to to say, oh, now you're a Christian, now you cannot go to parties, now you, not, you cannot go to a hockey game, now you cannot do this, now you cannot do that. You need to behave like this, to behave like that. God's plan is different. God wants to give you. Uh, uh, a future and a hope. Can you say future? Future. Yeah. All right. So, future is yet to come. To come. So, what God has for us is yet to come. I praise God for what He did in my past, in your past. Those are great things. But we need to build our lives looking forward, not backwards. And He wants to give you future. And hope. So, uh, think think about a race. When the race starts, you know you you get on the run and you do amazing things if you're a good runner. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a sprinter. I was fascinated because in those days they were still talking about running 100 meters in less than 10 seconds, and it, it, it was yet to be broken that record. Uh, people will do 10.8, 10.6, and I, I started to be fascinated with that. And uh, I was four or five years old uh, when I started to run and, uh, and do gymnastics and all these things. And, I, and I, I had a coach, and I told my coach, I was seven, eight years old, I want to beat the record and uh, you know, run the, the, uh, the 100 meters. But for my personal annoyance, <laughs> He uh, uh, decided that instead of running uh, sprint races, that I will run 10,000 meters and 5,000 meters and then half a marathon and then a marathon. And I didn't want it. I didn't want to run a marathon. I wanted to run fast. I wanted things to go fast. And those 10 seconds, that, that, that was like what I wanted. Uh, however, uh, when uh, the first opportunity came to participate in national championships, uh, uh, he placed me in different uh, uh, categories, and I realized that I was much better as an endurance uh, athlete rather than sprinting. And I have this particular ability. After running 10,000 meters, that's 10 kilometers, I was able to sprint at the end. <laughs> so actually, I was able to do what I wanted, but I had no personal abilities to uh, to run as a uh, you know the, the hundred meters because I wasn't going to be good in that particular discipline of uh, uh, athletics. So I had to have a coach to tell me, "You better off." You'll be more successful if you do it like this. Now, in life, we have <clears throat> different teachers. And I, I didn't like school particularly. And um, some of my kids are just like me. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed learning and the fun of being in school. But some teachers really marked me because they were excellent. And there's a difference between an, an excellent teacher and the lousy teacher that's there just for the role and to earn the salary. What we see today in many Christian venues is professional preachers that are boring. Church is boring. It's annoying because there's no real passion in what they're teaching and maybe they shouldn't be a preacher anyways mm -hmm. they should be doing be doing other stuff and sometimes when we're in a christian environment people try to ask us to do certain things 
And uh, I, I, I will never forget this man that came to one of, one of the churches where, where I was. And I, I was doing a, a healing school during the day. O almost nobody went to that place. But this man decided to come. He was an older man. And I learned so much from him. He was one of those politicians in the shadow. People that moved a nation. A person connected with all people of influence not only in the country but internationally but a shadow man very wise and I received so much advice from that man and one of the things he appreciated is that I never told him oh you want to be um, a, an usher or a deacon or this start the cell group but I just allowed him to be himself and whenever you know a person of influence comes to a Christian environment many times they get turned off because uh, churches and religious organizations try to extract them from their environment and to do something out of them in that little organization. It shouldn't be like this. As a church, we need to, uh, we need to see ourselves as part of God's kingdom, but then God has someone to be in politics, another one in sports, another one in, in, in the artistic realm, and just let them be, let them be. But we need people that will coach them, that will tell them, you're better off, instead of running 100 meters, you're better off doing something different. Mm -hmm. I, I just love this uh, pearl of wisdom from Solomon that I'm going to read in, uh, in Ecclesiastes 9.11. It says, I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry, and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance, by being at the right place at the right time. Wow, that's awesome. Talking about chance. Ooh, we cannot talk about chance. That's unchristian. That's ungodly. Listen, stuff in life happens to good people and bad people. And it's not always the fastest runner that cuts the finishing line in first. And it's not about our skills, but listen to this. There's two elements of success. The first one is chance. And wow, this is taboo. We don't talk about chance. What is chance? Well, it's not luck, mm -hmm. though some people are lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them. <laughs> I consider myself lucky in that. Uh, but chance is when an opportunity presents itself and you get it. It's when you buy that house that goes up in value $100,000 in four, four years. Mm -hmm. huh? That is chance. Chance. And the second element, whoops, it's being in the right place at the right time. Okay? So we often say you have to be the right person at the right place at the right time. And in other words, there are some circumstances that have to be put together in order to succeed. Now, how many of you want to be successful in what you do? Everybody? Okay, so you came to the right place. And listen, in order to be successful, you cannot control the element of chance. Because that's beyond your control. It's chance is those things that you only know in the future. Remember, God is about, God is about to do something in the future. So chance you cannot control, but being the right place in the right time, you have some level of control about. And what is the level of control that you have about this second element? Uh, it's, of course, when you feel that you need to follow a certain path and be in a certain place. Let me put it this way. You're not here today by accident. You came to the right place at the right time. And when you do so, then there's two uh, things that, you know, Christians say, oh, the Holy Spirit led me. 
If you're not a Christian, you say, I have a gut feeling about this. How do we blend these two together? Because we have gut feelings and we have the Holy Spirit. Some people are so spiritual, that it's the Holy Spirit everywhere. Others are the opposite. We need the right balance. But we need to understand this. Certain times in life, there's an opportunity to do something great. And let me tell you that with Passion Ministries, we're going to give you that opportunity to do something great. Yeah, now, associations are very, very important. When you associate with the right people, you can have, uh, this can cause all the difference in what you do. You need to be associated with the right uh, persons. And you need to do it in a, in a biblical way, like we say, it's not, I'm not talking about religious, terms, but there's, there's biblical or godly, let's put it this way, godly associations. Godly associations are those that you don't see it, but there was a purpose for that association. You don't see it yet, but you know I need to associate with this person or with this group of individuals. In Proverbs 13, 20, it says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer. Have you ever associated with fools? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I did. That's what caught me to drugs and to a, a life of misery. And, and years and years, I was addicted to heroin seven years. Not seven months, seven tough years where I was told you're not going to get out of this. Never, never. It's not going to happen. You're doomed to die. And I was seeing it around. Why? Because I associated with fools. Yes. <laughs> and I became one of them. I became a fool. Now I've learned when I associate with the wise, you know, uh, 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 there's something that rubs <laughs> and that, that I, I grasp, I get. So I, I like to associate with wise people. Amen. <laughs> so um, when people are people of vision, they usually walk together. And, uh, and those are people that are going to places. People that are uh, very critical, artificial, you know, if you, if you get a, a, along with them, you know, eventually you will end up in defeat. Mm -hmm. And this is so, so important. So find biblical friends in the sense that, that there are people that belong to a certain pattern of people. Find those people. And uh, people that will elevate you yes. instead of tearing you down. Amen. Right. You know, we, we need those people. I need those people around me. Yes. If there's people, you know, just putting me down, there's so much I can endure. And remember, I like to run the distance. <laughs> I'm, I'm able to run the distance. I don't give up. I run the distance. But uh, if there's people just booing, boo, 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 gets to a point that you cannot Amen. function. So it's very important that, uh, that we find friends also that can talk to our lives and that are able to tell, to tell us, you know, you shouldn't do this. You know, or you, you're better off this way. Remember that bad friends corrupt good character. That's in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Remember Proverbs 13, 20, choose wise people as friends. Now, Ducks are traveling now south. towards south. <laughs> they travel in groups. Now eagles, eagles fly alone. And they fly at a high altitude. They, don't, they do not mix with sparrows or with smaller birds like, like geese because birds of a feather Fly together. So, no bird goes to the heights of an eagle. No other bird. They stay, they fly low. But there's this specific bird, the eagle. And uh, even Moses, in the Old Testament, went to commune with God and he had to go to a higher place, to a mountain. He left the crowd at the foothill. And, and he climbed to be with God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, God called it to be an eagle. 
not to follow the duck at the side and to fly with ducks. God called you to be an eagle. In the sense, yes, we can associate with other people, but make sure you associate with other eagles. So, stay away from the, the ravens. <laughs> and make sure you fly with eagles and not with vultures. That's very important. Now, as I finish this word, let me tell you. what God wants to lead you. Your destiny depends on God. But you need to follow His lead to be in the right place at the right time. And then you'll be successful. Imagine products that were so successful. Imagine the world without a yo-yo. Such a simple thing. But someone got rich making a yo-yo. <laughs> someone got rich making a Rubik cube in the right season when when uh, business people come with the right product guess what happens now they're saying that uh, uh, apple is a religion <laughs> <laughs> and they've shown this uh, you know the one of the, the the directors with with an ipad like this and like everybody's bowing <laughs> it's the right product the right time and that's why everybody wants to copy and to do, to do it. And they, they might say, we're not copying, we're doing our own. They're copying, which is good. It's good to have diversity. But even in business, when you have the right stuff in the right time, it's successful. I believe that Passion Ministries was called for such a time as this. And this is why you are here. Jeremiah 31.9, again, I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble this is what god wants to do he wants to lead us to streams of water now uh, uh, what is a stream of water it's something fresh it's new mm -hmm. it's renewed Renew. it's different from a swamp yeah. so i i i studied Many, many years, too many years in university, 10 years. And I went from course to course, and the last one, I, I just loved it. Uh, and I studied ecology and ecosystems and all these things. And there was a purpose for that. Because right now, churches are bad ecosystems. <laughs> and we're here to change it to streams instead of swamps. In the swamp, you have the alligator called Leviathan in the Bible, mm -hmm. which is a demonic spirit. And uh, even bigger ones, the uh, hippopotamus, which, which is also referred in the Bible as, as a, a beast, a demonic force of uh, epic proportions. And we see all these things. But God says, I will lead you to the streams of water. So we need to allow God to lead, to lead us. So, uh, so we'll be in the right place. And he says, you will not stumble. So I'd like to finish showing you this uh, awesome road. That's in France. And um, th th these are the roads you know, where they do those uh, car, uh, car uh, ads. And you see you know, the, the Cadillac going there and all these things. And uh, they have always new difficult roads now to, to show the new model of car in those roads. Like people that buy those cars are going to drive in those roads. <laughs> Duh, yeah. It's not going to happen. But when we have a hard road, we can stumble. Mm -hmm. But God's promise is that the way I will lead you, you will not stumble. You will not fall. I'll go with you along the way. So what is the road? The road is the journey of our lives. So in life we can do many things. And God wants our journey to be smooth, mm -hmm. not to be bumpy, not to be, you know, full of challenges. But certain times, the way gets difficult and narrow and hard to travel. But we have this promise that will always be with us. 
And God said, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. <laughs> so I want to encourage you to find your way of blessing. Make sure that you're in the right place at the right time and that you associate with the right people. If you do so, you have a, a future of great blessing.